everybody. Welcome to Kimmel's Irish Pub. Tonight's movie, Hangman. Um, so it's a um, um, crime mystery thriller. Al Pacino's in it, Brittany Snow, and Carl Urban. So you might have heard of all those names. I've heard of them. Carl Urban, I've seen before. Um, and so evidently a homicide detective pairs up with a criminal profiler to catch a serial killer who's using the game Hangman to do his murders. So I'm not sure how or why, but if you remember, you know, Hangman, and to, you guess the letters of the, the sentence until you fill out the body parts or you're hung. Which, when you think about it, is kind of a morbid game. Um, but it's about time they came up with a movie about it. How about that? All right. So, um... That's all I know. Al Pacino is in it, so it could be decent. Actually, that's not all I know. I know IMDb has this rated at a 5.1. Um, and then Rotten Tomatoes, <laughs> the critics 6% and the audience 30%. So I'm really taking one for the team here. I'm going to check it out for you and let you know if it's worth watching. So stick around. I'll be back in a little bit and I'll let you know. All right. See ya. Hey, everybody. We're um, at the 50 minute and 32 second mark of Hangman, um, and I'm, uh, it's entertaining to me. There are some some glaring mistakes, I think, in a sense. So um, Al Pacino and um, the other male actor, um, Carl Urban, I think his name is, whatever. Um, Al Pacino's retired, but he um, Carl Urban goes back to him to ask him for help. So. They found a victim that has an O carved in the body, and they were just hung. So it's not the whole. And I thought the O was symbolizing the head. It's not. They're trying to spell out the letters that you know to for the hangman game. But other than hanging, it's not like they're putting body parts. You know how you do in the game. So that's not part of it. But they're they're finding victims, and each victim leads them to the next victim, and yeah, it gives them basically 24 hours to to find them, um, <clears throat> and it's evidently going to spell something out. Um, so, you know, so that's interesting, and Al Pacino is the guy he goes to, he's a retired homicide detective, um, but he recruits him because his badge number was showing up at one crime scene, he says, you know, come, come with me and help me with this kind of thing. So he's doing that. Brittany Snow is a journalist who is tagging along, so she is, you know, interviewing detectives to learn their side of the story, but immediately is allowed to you know, um, right along with these detectives on, you know, their day-to-day -day activities. Now, it just turns out that they're investigating all these different murders. So, you know, she gets ultimate access as they um, interrogate one of the uh, potential um, suspects. She's involved the whole time listening and, and writing things down, which, you know, maybe that does happen. I don't know. I would think that there would be some limited access that she would be able to go on. But she's full access. They go to crime scenes where the murderer is still lurking around, and she's left on her own. Um, so kind of strange that they, they do all that kind of stuff. Um, she's actually helpful at one part, um, trying to get a substat, substat, uh, sub, you know, person of interest. <laughs> um, and then one other th um, one other things like so and uh, Carl Urban's uh, wife had been murdered prior to this and um, Brittany Snow looks at the file for a minute now these are two seasoned detectives um, who have you know all these years experience and she looks at it for a minute and she shows it to Al Pacino and says oh you missed this after a minute she's an expert on, on uh, his wife's murder so it was like or on his, you know, Carl Urban's wife's murder. So it's like, just by looking at one picture and everything like that. And so it's kind of, I don't know. It happened to be right on top of the all the files. A little too convenient if you ask me. But still, interesting. They're trying to figure out who did this. What's the link? How are they all involved? And I'm sure it's all going to come back somewhere, somehow. So we'll see what happens. One other thing I want to mention that I, I kind of picked up on. It was pretty neat. As they, they give you... He's given him 24 hours, and it seems like the murders happen at 11 o'clock at night. And I didn't know this at first, but they show they're driving down a road, and they show the time on the road. Instead of like, you know, like they usually show down at the bottom, like a subtitle kind of thing. It's like 11.30 at night or whatever it is right down there. No, it's like part of the road. Now it's like, oh, that was neat. 
Then they show it a second time. They're pulling into um, like a building of some sort, and it's up on the building. Different font, different color, kind of matching its surrounding, but yet showing you the time, so you can, you know, be aware of what time it is when they're entering these crime scenes and things like that. So I, I thought that was pretty neat. I like it's a clever way of doing it, creative, something different than what everybody else does, and uh, I, I like that part of it. And again, I think it's it's also entertaining, I'm trying to figure out who's doing it, why they're doing it, um, with some glaring holes, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to keep watching it here a little bit and uh, check back in, probably at the credits, give you my final synopsis and uh, tell you thumbs up or thumbs down. All right? See you in a bit. <laughs> All right, so we're at the uh, credits here of Hangman and uh, a little disappointed. So let me just talk a little bit about the last half of the movie here. Um, you know, I picked it up right in the beginning. Right in the beginning, Carl um, Urban and Al Pacino meet, and that's where he's trying to recruit him to help him with these uh, with these bodies that he's finding. And the exchange that they have is very odd. Um, you know, it didn't seem there's... You know, I don't know if it was a lack of chemistry between the actors or just a lack of good dialogue from the writers and the directors and the producers. It was just really weird. It was, it was just uncomfortable, kind of like, eh, whatever. So then I'm watching that throughout the film, and it happens other times. Another time when they're at the, uh, there's a train station, and, and it hit me again. I was like, that's another weird interaction. So you're starting to think, okay, and you're trying to solve the mystery yourself. Who is Hangman, and how does how are all these people involved? And you're using these interactions to do that kind of stuff. So, um... It was just very strange interactions that, uh, uh, you know, didn't sit right with me. In addition to that, as they go and find these different bodies, I forget how many there were, um, but he's leaving clues on how to find the next body. And the way that the, the clues, they didn't make any sense to me. They would It was just like they'd make something up and then be like, let's go comb the river. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, you'll see what I mean when you watch that. I didn't think that they were... Not that you want to make them completely obvious, but they were so... I don't know. They were, it seemed like it was just like made up on the spot. <laughs> and they were just like, yeah, let's go do this. So it wasn't very... You know, I don't know. Didn't lead. I, I didn't think it was put together well there. And also, when they're um, investigating these bodies or something like that, they're trying to get to them before, you know, 11 o'clock before they die, because they die like right at 11 or something like that, you know. So they're getting there. There's multiple times that the suspect is there. Somebody's there. You know, almost, I think he's there every time, but there's like two or three times that they actually see him and, and don't do anything about it. They don't go chase him. They don't do anything, which is odd, you know. And then finally, they do. They finally give chase um, at one point. Um, and, of course, they get in a car in a high-speed chase. They throw Brit Britney Snow in the back seat so they can go 100 miles an hour chasing this this is a murder suspect. So very strange there. So th there's a lot of um, parts that, a lot of holes, I guess, or I don't know, a lot of things that quirks of this movie that I didn't think uh, did really well. But if you take those out and then you watch the, the rest of it, knowing that kind of stuff and watching it as a crime movie, it's kind of fun trying to solve a mystery. And, you know, you just let that stuff go and, and, and have fun with it. And if you're into these kinds of things, then it might work out for you. And you might enjoy it until the end. Until the end, and they blew it. Um, and I don't want to go into too much detail and, and spoil it for you. Um, but it really... You, I, you waste a lot of brain power doing what I did. Trying to figure it all out. And taking my guess. Who's involved? How's it happen? Uh, you know, what does, what is he trying to spell? I, I got close to that. Um, but then, like, the whole, you know, motivation behind Hangman and everything like that just fell flat with me. Um, again, not going to give you any spoilers, but I do think that this is part of the reason, you know, I think producers, directors should employ people like us. Because I'm sure it's not just me, but they can employ me. But I think if somebody would have gave me this movie and said, okay, we're not releasing this to the public, watch it, let me know what you think. You know, after an hour, an hour and 38 minutes long, I could tell them that's not the way you want to end this movie. Change it, 
and do something like this and, and go back and, and help them. You know, I mean, maybe just give me a day and I'll put a report on their desk in the morning and they, I can come up with a whole bunch of better ways to have this movie end. Or, you know what I mean? Like, and you'll see what I mean. It's just, I, again, I think it was kind of like on the spot kind of thing. It was like, okay, we've created this pretty intricate plot on, you know, these different murders, kind of like Seven in a sense, and, and they're intertwined, and these cops are involved, and Britney Snow somehow, isn't there? And and then, you know, and then it got to the end, and it's like, okay, we don't have enough time or enough of the budget to make this work out, to make it really interesting and happen, so let's just do this. Let's just film this, there it is, and uh, it's over. <laughs> and then they throw a little thing at the end that, uh, somewhat interesting but uh, oh, I, I can't it's hard to explain without spoilers don't waste I mean if you want to watch a nine a mind-numbing movie don't waste your brain energy trying to figure out you know the motivation between but behind the murder and the murderers and, and all that kind of stuff I mean just watch it and sit back and enjoy it if you'd like to I'd really I really wish you would so you could understand where I'm coming from because um, you might just think that I'm crazy but uh, Check it out. Watch it. I am... I mean, I'm, I'm at least a 6, maybe a 5. I, I can't give it a 5 because I did enjoy parts of it. Like, I thought there was some stuff there. Even with all the quirks and the holes and the and the things like that. I, You know, I, I knew. I didn't have my expectations. I, it's just the, the ending and the whole... Bringing it all together, they didn't do it so well. So, alright, enough for me. The... You check it out. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel. All that stuff. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Kimmel's Irish Pub.